Here you go. Now this is just... It'll snake around your mouth for probably the next 20 to 30 minutes. Let's give it a try. Wow. That's really something. Oh yeah, and it's memorable and you will not forget it. it How do you describe it? Like I've never tasted anything quite like that. Just from your own organoleptic connection to it. Like just that taste. It's like, whoa, there's something real here. I spend a lot of time thinking about mushrooms and looking for mushrooms, but maybe not enough time thinking about the way mushrooms really connect absolutely everything in the forest. We are on Vancouver Island right now in an old growth forest and you can really feel the energy. You can feel how everything is connected and basically every step that you take, you can feel the mycelium underneath your feet connecting everything around it. Mushrooms play such an important role in the forest, not only breaking down all the trees that die, but also just connecting all of the living things. When you really slow down and take a look at everything that's happening in the forest, it really puts into perspective the massive role that mushrooms play in our ecosystems. Now there is one person on this island that understands these deeper mycological connections probably better than anybody, and we're going to meet him right now to take a walk in the woods. Yarrow Willard, also known as the Herbal Jedi, is a clinical herbalist and educator residing in the Comox Valley on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. His appreciation for the natural world and our deep connection to nature is evident as soon as you meet him. What you appreciate appreciates, right? I appreciate this mushroom, therefore it's, uh, it's got, it appreciates in its value. <laughs> appreciate, appreciate. And then what I also like to do is Sometimes I will drink the mycopea, as it's called, which is this liquid. So typically the mushrooms sweat out a uh, uh, mycopea. We asked Yarrow what was so fascinating to him about mushrooms. I loved the idea that, that mushrooms were closely related to animals and they were closely related to us. So I thought, wow, when I, it really made sense to me that the chemistry found in many of the medicinal mushrooms really works for our body because of the close relation and their ability to adapt and be more resilient and be a little more evolved on this planet. So the more I learned, the more I realized that, wow, these are highly intelligent beings and I want to get to know them better. And it's been analyzed. It's mostly water, but there are like some electrolytes and some minerals in there. And it's actually uh, just another just another way to tune in, right? And to give reverence to the mushrooms without necessarily harvesting them, right? It's not always for medicine. Delicious. Yarrow also has a family-owned business called Harmonic Arts that provides natural medicines to people all over Canada. We started doing that and started cultivating some herbs and picking a wild mushrooms, making tinctures and sort of in a farmer's market, literally just bringing medicine to people and our training had us understand how to do good formulations. That grew into a place where some wholesale customers wanted to take us on and then that grew and grew and grew and over 12, 13 years now, um, Harmonic Arts has become a major staple in the health food world. Let's be honest, it can sometimes be a challenge to see the forest for the trees. This is especially true for mushrooms and the intricate systems that connect everything. Unless we're told what to look for and tune into our surroundings, we can overlook the amazing things that happen to be right beneath our feet. And that's what's neat about mushrooms, actually, yeah. is that, uh, because they're not there all the time, and then poof, they pop up, you're like, wow! But they've been living in the mycelial web underground, so they are there all the time. Yeah. It's just that we don't notice them. We know that mushrooms play the role of the great decayers. Without fungi, the forests wouldn't exist like we know them. And it turns out that in some ecosystems, the mushrooms might not exist without their leafy counterparts either. So there's this continual exchange of um, trying to create resilience through um, more biocomplexity, right? Mm -hmm. So stability in an ecosystem comes from the complexity and the mycelial nets work to actually create more complex ecosystems in order to buffer the environment. So the idea is actually what they're looking at now is it, is it the trees that grow the mushrooms or the mushrooms that grow the trees? And it's coming out that it sounds a lot more like the mycelial nets are creating the environment that is best for them to thrive in via buffering the nutritional profile of all the plants. <laughs> the forests or the trees 
are the accumulators of the wisdom, right? They hold the long knowledge, like the elephant mind kind of thing. Whereas the mycelial nets are the like the fast connection, the the nervous system almost, like the monkey mind, we'll say. Right, right. right? And so the mycelial nets are holding all this information transferring back and forth in the wood wide web, and the trees are storing the long-term knowledge. All of these personifications that Yarrow made really helped me understand the deep relationships between us, the mushrooms, and the rest of the forest. It might not be obvious from a human vantage point, but there is a lot going on underground. The forest floor is host to a complex network with nutrients being bought and sold, basically bustling with fungal economic activity. In this part of the world we have uh, a number of what are called saprophytes, um, and they are these interesting plants that live without chlorophyll, they kind of might look like this, um, that live without chlorophyll, that live between the mushrooms or the mycelial nets and the tree roots. And so they actually feed off of the mycelial nets. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the mycelial nets that really sequester all the carbon. Here, Yarrow is talking about saprophytic plants, which interact with mushrooms and trees. But mushrooms are also categorized as saprophytic or mycorrhizal, and this characterizes how they interact with their environment. Basically, saprophytic fungi live off of dead matter and get their life force from things like dead logs. Mycorrhizal fungi, on the other hand, are involved in a mutualistic symbiosis with living things, where they obtain plant carbon in exchange for for nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. The agaricon mushroom is an elusive and ancient mushroom that harbors some of the strongest concentrations of bioactive compounds known to the mushroom world. And that is really saying something. The agaricon has some notoriety from Paul Stamets, who talks about this mushroom extensively. We hope to find it during our time on Vancouver Island, and it just so happened that Yero knew of at least one agaricon near his home. Here you go. You. Now this is just... The amount of flavor in it is like, wow. And it'll, it'll snake around your mouth for probably the next 20 to 30 minutes. Let's give it a try. Wow, that's really something. Oh yeah, and it's memorable and you will not forget it. it How do you describe it? Like I've never tasted anything quite like that. This thing definitely had a memorable taste, just as Yero described. It went back and forth between bitter and sweet, just like life. Just from your own organoleptic connection to it, like just that taste, it's like, whoa. There's something real here, right? Like, you know, when you try reishi, you get those strong bitter notes. You're like, oh yeah, this is real medicine, right? These terpenes are really coming out. You know, this is considered the most antiviral mushroom on the planet. The agaricon is powerful, but rare. They take a long time to grow, and the environments that harbor these ancient mushrooms are also becoming ever more rare. So how can we use these mushrooms as medicine without eradicating them? Well, the bigger thing is, is that we can't replace these forests in our lifetimes, right? A, a true old growth forest is 400 years old or older. It's easy to just blaze through a forest trail, but in this busy life, it's just as important to slow down. Yero spoke a lot about the experience of walking into the woods and simply paying attention. Our minds are supported. Our mental health is encouraged. So there's just so many benefits beyond consuming the wild uh, but at the same time having a chance to like nibble on some flowers and feel like you're part of the world it's pretty um, nice. we're so far separated in that in our daily life what is it about these mushrooms and plants that allows them to act as a medicine of course it's easy to look at this with a scientific lens and simply give credit to the compounds inside but yarrow spoke a lot about the wisdom found in these organisms describing their medicinal compounds as wisdom might sound sort of hokey but it really makes sense when you look at it through an evolutionary lens what we consider medicinal mushrooms are forest kind of grounding for us and their, their immune support is really just their strategy of dealing with all the pathogenic organisms all over. Um, we just aren't quite as evolved as they are, so we borrow their chemistry to support our immune system. Mushrooms, like all things in nature, have a function. But as humans, is it reasonable to approach these things with a healthy dose of fear? We've talked about mycophobia on this channel before, but we wanted to get Yarrow's take on it. 
Yeah, well, mycophobia comes from the fact that we don't see them all the time and they just pop up out of nowhere. So we don't have this familiarity with it is a big part of that. Every mushroom pops up a little different. You know, and you look at even just chanterelles, like there's like so many different types. So that's a big part of it is that you have familiarity with plants and you see them all the time. The other thing is, is that uh, for mushrooms, you need to cook them. And people don't realize that all the time and they, or they get curious about it, they're excited about it. Often if people get mushroom poisoning, it's because they just like ate a mushroom, which is <laughs> just a bad idea. Our time with Yarrow on Vancouver Island was truly unique. I think the main takeaway from our visit was just that nothing in nature happens in a vacuum. Everything truly is connected and each organism has a role to play. Mushrooms and mycelial structures are one in the many influential and important players in the ancient game of life. And we sure feel grateful to be studying and appreciating them daily here at Fresh Cap. When you're walking around in the woods, it's so easy to just see plants or to just see trees or to just see green. But when you really stop and look at the microscopic and take the time to kind of investigate all these little plants and mushrooms and all the connections that they have together, it's amazing what you can see. The other important thing to remember, and this really became obvious when talking to Yarrow, is that even though you don't always see mushrooms everywhere, it's still pretty early in the season and there's honestly just the odd mushroom popping up here and there. But underneath the moss, underneath the ground, the mushrooms are always there doing the work. And if the mushrooms weren't here in this forest, it would just be a big giant pile of dead logs. Nothing would break down, nothing would recycle, and it just wouldn't be the same. And the role that mushrooms play in the forest, even though it's not always super obvious when you're looking and you're out on the trail, it's always there. So next time you go walking in the woods, maybe just take out a microscope and spend a little more time looking at the finer details of everything. Because as with anything else, with mushrooms, there's always so much more to learn. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn more about mushrooms, feel free to subscribe, give this video a like, and we'll see you in the next one.